Thomas and welcome to Gruen. Why does every brand want me to thank them? Like Forex. But if we don't look after this perfect piece of paradise, crops die, which means hops die, which means beer dies. <laughs> thank you, Forex, for noticing climate change. Now, <laughs> now I'm not drunk at work. I'm saving the environment, Ida. <laughs> Vanish wants to thank you for fixing landfill. New clothes make us feel good, but that feeling fades. So we throw out about 23 kilos a year, adding to the 6,000 kilos dumped in Australia every 10 minutes. Wow, I'd say we need to take a hard look at ourselves, but we threw out our mirror. <laughs> Vanish, how do we fix it? If we take care of our clothes with the help of Vanish, we can rewear our clothes for longer and help keep them out of landfill. You can wash clothes? <laughs> I've been chucking my suits in the bin. <laughs> Even chairs expect us to thank them. For 50 years, we've made it our mission to reduce the world's stress levels. I think we can all agree, mission accomplished. <laughs> Thanks, chair, but how did you do it? By crafting intuitive furniture that calms the mind, cradles the body, and carries the soul. <laughs> <laughs> carries the soul? More like carries my ass off. <laughs> But the worst offenders are the massive thankers at Suncorp, who made a whole song and dance about saving the world. Look, I'm not being funny, but where we choose to put our money can mean that our transactions ripple into climate action. When the forest's full of trees, its chance of living well increases. Hello, penguin. Hello, kelp. Just know we've heard you cry for help. An acoustic bank ballad? <laughs> I'd prefer climate change. <laughs> so how are Suncorp saving the world? Erica heard she could get $3,000 for taking out a Suncorp bank home loan on a property with solar power. So she did. That helped the planet cool a bit. The ants rejoiced. And this little guy lived to dig a lot of holes. Thank you, Suncorp. I always knew banking with you was helping a bunch of pricks. <laughs> Please welcome our panel, Todd Sampson, Sunita Glosser, Priya Patel and Dee Madigan. <laughs> All this month, the ABC is celebrating turning 90 years old and finally reaching the age of our average viewer. <laughs> Over the past nearly a century, Auntie has tried to brand itself in many different ways. From yours to it's your ABC, before clarifying it's actually everyone's ABC. <laughs> and for a little while claimed there's more to the ABC, until it turned out there wasn't. <laughs> this week, the ABC is celebrating its birthday by launching a brand new brand campaign. Typical ABC, always banging on about itself. <laughs> Priya, why not reference the last 90 years in the ad? Well, I think the intent behind this is to leverage a moment in time to connect emotionally with a very wide audience. So the ABC obviously has to have people love it, has to have people support it and feel pride in it. And that's what this type of work is designed to try and do. And it is a kind of proven, tried and tested patriotic formula. So if you look at brands like Qantas or Tourism Australia, actually a lot of their creative is quite similar. You know, they take a big anthemic tune that makes people feel good, makes you feel like you want to join in. They show the breadth of the nation, the kind of diversity that we're celebrating and that spirit of inclusivity. And then they do use language like yours and everyone's quite deliberately to give people that sense of ownership. I think though if their brand weakness is being seen as old and fuddy-duddy heritage can um, cut as much as it kisses. So if you're selling sort of nostalgia, the danger is that you're selling old and daggy, which is probably why they've avoided it. I think this ad is about timing and it's a subtle nod about funding. So, and I don't mean that in a cynical way. We've got a new government who are setting budgets and I think this is getting a very clear message to the government and to all of us about the pivotal role the ABC plays in shaping our national identity. Yeah, I, I think it's a reminder of the dual target market that the ABC has, us as viewers and playing on our patriotism and, mm. and tribalism, but also the government. You know, it is, it is yours as a positioning is really passing it off onto us and saying, do not touch the ABC, it belongs right. to the people. And I think that on that level, that positioning of yours is, is clever and useful.
This ad doesn't do it, though. I mean, for me, this ad is... <laughs> I actually feel like this ad is amplifies everything that every criticism levelled at the ABC. I mean, it's beautifully directed. You know, it's choreographed within an inch of its life. It's art. It's highbrow. You know, I... I, I hate this ad. Like, it's... it's <laughs> um, yeah, it's just... It's, it's chest-beating. It is like a Qantas ad, and it misses everything that the ABC used to be, which was that cheeky, making ordinary moments come alive. That kind of ordinariness isn't there in this, and I think it's a missed opportunity. Well, I think they're trying to celebrate. They're trying to make a big, literal song and dance uh, mm. about their 90th. So I, I sort of understand them doing... And we're doing 90 because we're not sure we'll make it to 100. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sort of understand... We're like the Queen. We're hanging in, but... <laughs> Over the years, the ABC have tried a lot of different ways to make Australians love it. In 1994, we pushed Ruth Cracknell's sanity to the brink. Talk to me. I want to watch television. Aren't I more interesting than all those silly ads? I won't be watching ads. I'm going to watch the ABC. But aren't I more interesting than anything they've got to show? Where can I start? The ABC travels all over the world to keep you up to date with news and current affairs. Arthur! and brings you science programs and great documentaries. Arthur? We go behind the scenes to deliver the information you asked for. Just a minute. And with sport, we have a ball. That might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We used to have a special effects budget. <laughs> and in 1975, the ABC ran this. ABC stands for always being classy. <laughs> D, can the ABC still make bold ads? It can. I wouldn't make the bikey one again, necessarily. <laughs> Look, I think it can, and I think it's been a little bit scared to because there's been a political environment where they have felt under attack. So there's been... Um, your natural instinct then is to be a bit risk-averse, which I get, but I feel like it's wrong and that you actually should... Um, take risks and own it a little bit and understand that the people criticising might have loud voices, but they're not actually representative of everyone. We know, like, the ABC is one of Australia's most loved brands. So if I was the ABC, I'd be a little bit braver and bolder in its advertising. I'm not certain either of those ads would go today, but uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm not it's... sure that they worked at the time. <laughs> <laughs> But, the, but, but I think it just gets to the sort of dichotomy of targeting that the ABC has. So we know that the ABC's, the average viewers in their 60s, and the ABC's trying to shed that. So they're trying, to, because that audience is both dying off, but, but also it's... But it, sorry if you are. Yeah. But, but, it, but, that, but that audience is sort of shrinking, and the other audience is go, potentially going away. So they need to appeal to a younger audience and their core audience at the same time, and they err on the side of conservatism towards that core audience. Yeah, I've got to say, as an outsider who hasn't seen these before, they are mental. That's <laughs> mental. That is, um, and I actually worked on the BBC for a number of years in the UK. Would the BBC do an ad like that? I, they definitely wouldn't, no. <laughs> um, it's definitely more populist, mainstream, and trying to do that balancing act that we've talked about of trying to be progressive, appealing to a younger audience, creating programming that genuinely appeals to the whole nation, but at the same time trying to be bold and stand out. And I think creatively, there's excitement and fun in these that maybe we've lost a bit of. If you had told me that a telerecording of a cathode ray oscilloscope would become one of Australia's most iconic logos, I'd be asleep before you could finish the sentence. <laughs> That's why we just draw it instead. But the illicit you enjoy that word, nerds, wasn't always <laughs> easy to draw, like this attempt in 1998. Stupid kid. <laughs> In 1982, the ABC logo got groovy. 
You're watching ABC Colour with the two Ronnies. Barker and Corbett bring you twice the laughs and the two Ronnies. Thursday nights at half past eight on ABC Colour. Nothing says freaky psychedelic love like the two Ronnies. <laughs> <laughs> Selena, what makes this logo so iconic? So, well, I think great logos die because marketers and ad people tinker with them. They get tired of them, they want to refresh them. Sometimes it's just ego. They want to put a stamp of their own, like, this happened on my terms. Mm. So I think the thing with it is the one fundamental rule about branding is consistency. And there's a litany of examples where people have made that mistake. American Airlines, Kraft, Gap had to go back to an old logo because consumers said, no, 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 we don't like the new one. But there's only two rules to remember. One is if you've got a great design, which the ABC does, don't mess with it. Don't let any agency, marketer or CEO get their fingers on it. And the second one is hammer it home. Use it everywhere. And that's relatively easy when you're the ABC because you don't have a competing logo in your ad break. Yeah. I mean, logos are just a form of conditioning, right? The idea is you see the logo and you immediately associate it with the company or brand, and it gives you some level of, of differentiation. Uh, the, the cool thing about this logo, I think, from a design perspective, is its symmetry. It, it, it works almost everywhere. And, and I remember in our design agency, they used to have a test, which ended up being their ad. The test was the best logos should be able to be drawn. Yeah. Like, you should be able to grab a piece of paper, a pen, and draw the logo immediately, and, and that's the ABC. ABC News is still Australia's most trusted news source, at least I think it is. I heard it on the ABC, so who knows what to believe. <laughs> but how do you sell the news with high-octane ads like this from 1994? From home and abroad, across Australia and around the world, now, the one source. Trouble spot. For local. Touch lines. National. November. And international news and current affairs. Welcome to the program. Is ABC, the largest independent news service in Australia. Join the news force. It's your ABC. News force. <laughs> My favourite part? This. National. November. <laughs> See, without the ABC, we'd never know about important news events like November. <laughs> And in 2020, the ABC spruiked its news credentials like this. I never thought I'd feel this way, the way I feel about you. Absolutely vital that you're there and providing the service to our community. So thank you so very much. You must be love, love, love. It must be love, love. Another brand thanking itself. <laughs> Priya, is this a better way to sell your integrity? Well, I think the two spots kind of highlight the difference between rational and emotional types of communication. So the first spot absolutely does the rational reasons why you should trust ABC News. It's got the local, the national, the global perspective. It's got boots on the ground and it feels like it has integrity. But the second one, I think, really unlocks the emotion and what the news actually does for you, which is connects you to people and the stuff that matters to you. I really have cognitive dissonance with the second one. <laughs> so uh, I think that the messages that are coming up, uh, most of them are, you know, substantial issues that happened within Australian society that they played a role in. And they're really substantive. And then that music just makes me want to vomit. Like, it, it's, it's too sickly sweet. So the juxtaposition doesn't work for me. And also, from a news perspective, well, I think one of the things that makes the ABC brand unique is that it is, it is not a validation seeker. It is not following social media for its news leads. Mm -hmm. It's independent of that. And this, to me, feels like it fits into that uh, tell me how good I am, social media validates me. I think the ABC news is about doing what's right, not what's popular, and this to me plays a bit too much into that popularity for But me. you know what? I quite like the sexing up of the news parts of the ABC. So traditionally, um, you know, introverted, conservative, inaccessible editorial talent is now becoming social media and merchandise celebs. You know, Laura Tingle isn't having any of your shit is a T-shirt I would wear. Mm. Um, you just I have, have to, worn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to look at the send-off that um, Lee Sales got last week. It was an extravaganza compared to the 50 seconds Kerry O'Brien got in 2010. Mm. 
It's almost like Auntie Ida is, you know, doing a Kardashian and making all of her babies stars as they sell the ABC. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've just got some breaking news. December. <laughs> I'm hearing December. So selling the ABC isn't always about good vibes and pure unbridled sex. In 1991, the ABC argued it also makes financial sense. In the last three years, the average food bill for an Australian family has gone up by $36 a week. The average weekly income has increased by $105. Rents have gone up by up to 50%. What hasn't gone up? Australia's ABC. Still only eight cents a day. Wow. The ABC used to have eight cents? <laughs> Our ads don't talk about value for money anymore, so, Todd, why not? I'm not certain economic rationalism would work today in, in that way. Uh, firstly, I, I think that saying that, you know, there's less people at the ABC but more content uh, doesn't send the right message to staff because it's basically just saying you just work twice as hard for the same pay. So I think that they'd be weary to do that. Mm. Also... I think the staff are already aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'd be watching an ad on the ABC and go, shit, they are exploiting us. <laughs> but it also raises the argument that, or the thought that may not be in the mind of many consumers, that we actually pay for it. Like, because they, because what, if you were countering that, you would just add up the numbers and go, but you might say eight cents or 12 cents or 14 cents, but really you get $1.1 $1 .1 billion a year. And they would go to the total number. Yeah. I think also that it just doesn't stack up anymore because of Netflix, you know. It, Netflix came along at $10 a month, which is 20 cents a day for $17 billion worth of content mm. every year. The value equation for the ABC on eight cents doesn't stack up anymore in a consumer's mind. I think the holy grail for marketers, though, is to be in a category of one. And the ABC can do that and can defend that if they remove themselves from being compared to any other broadcaster. So if all they stand for is education, entertainment and information that you can't get anywhere else but on the ABC because you serve me, not commercial partners and advertising revenue, then that makes it the category they would need to stay in. For years, ABC Kids has put bears in their bananas in pyjamas and had Plenty of exciting merchandising opportunities. The Play School Picture Poster. With drawings of Humpty Dumpty, Big Ted and Little Ted, Jemima, and lots of other things from Play School. <laughs> There's one thing I know about kids, it's they love other things. <laughs> but now there's a new face of ABC Kids, a little dog called Bluey, who has captured our hearts and wallets. Bluey's Caravan Adventures, each sold separately. Aren't it's Bluey Biscuits, only $3. Mm, wait till she turns 18 and starts flogging Winfield Blueys. <laughs> There are over a thousand Bluey products for sale, from a Bluey trampoline to Bingo's Bingo. I'm just excited to merchandise my new series, Puppet Will and the Unscrupulous Cash Grab. <laughs> Bluey can sell everything. D, can she sell the ABC? Look, she, she can and, and she is. Um, and Bluey's now seen in 60 countries. It's interesting though, the ABC doesn't own the marketing rights to Bluey's. The BBC does and Disney does a little bit. So the ABC's not quite, you know, bringing in the bucks. But the ABC's always punched above its weight in that space, from Play School to Wiggles and, yeah. and Bluey. But, um, but what it used to also have was Countdown and the popularity of Triple J, so for that younger audience. And they're the people that the ABC have lost, and because TikTok's a different way of finding music and that. But there's also something else there as well where when you grow up, you don't want to listen to the same station that you listen to when you're a baby. It's a sign of growing up not to. And also, if your parents are watching the ABC, you don't want to be where they are as well. So you, you, with some brands like Levi's, there's almost a generational skip before it becomes cool again. So this is where the ABC, I think, needs to work hard. Not at, Bluey's doing a fabulous job, but at that sort of 
other audience to see if they can get them in different mediums. Maybe it's not through broadcast. We know they're not watching broadcast anyway, but really sort of try to get that target audience. It's kind of like a branded house, the ABC. There are so many different rooms for different customer segments and you move through room from room. So I might have started in the room with a bear and a chair and then I went to the room where the drum was beating and now I'm on the sofa with Laura, I've told you that. You know, I sit on the sofa with Laura Tingle and Lee Sales. But, <laughs> but I think the thing with it is, will you always remember what those other rooms were like? So whilst it's a long time since I've been with the bear and the chair, when I had children, I put them back into that room that I was in and when one day I have grandchildren, the same thing will happen because the experience was so great in that room Room, I want my children and grandchildren to feel that as well. And that's how you keep, I mean, that's brand equity money can't buy, that I remember that experience. Before we move on, we'd like to thank ABC Archives for their help with this segment. Without them, here's what it would have looked like. <laughs> think we all agree, not as good. <laughs> Instead, we get to see ads like this from 1975 when the ABC got a big name endorsement. A bit of new blood with ABC. I'd have gone with ABC, the channel that doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> Australia is a sports mad nation, but on this, the official network for Uncos, we've challenged our agency to blow the final whistle. This week, two pitches to convince Australians to ban sport. Here's the first pitch. Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Ross from Likeable Creative. We thought the best way to get people to accept a sports ban was to make them feel competitive in other areas and appeal to Australia's national pride. Excuse me. What is Australian Mark Lidwell famous for? An Australian tennis champion? Inventor of the cardiac pacemaker. Can you tell me about Ian Fraser? Uh, isn't that the Australian Olympic swimmer? Created the cervical cancer vaccine. Oh. Who is John O'Sullivan? Did he play for the Wallabies? Aussie inventor of Wi-Fi. Australia should be known for more important things than sport, so we're banning it. <laughs> Wake up to yourselves and do more stuff like this. Well, you've convinced me. Here's the second pitch. G'day, I'm Tom. And I'm Andy. And we're from next Thursday. In a modern game of sport, there's more influential players than we probably realise. And they're damaging, so let's just ban the whole thing. Or ban sport. Smoking has been killing Aussies for decades. But advertising cigarettes on Australian TV was only banned in 1976. Then, big tobacco sponsored sport, until that was banned in 96. Today, alcohol, gambling and fast food are the main sponsors of sport. Now, we could try and ban them too, but that would take years and cost billions. Or we could save millions of lives from pain and misery and simply... Look, this is a big call, and I'll miss those rabbits. But just ban sport. For good. Authorised by the Department of BS. <laughs> well, you've convinced me, but let's see what our panel thinks. Dee, which did you prefer? I thought the strategy for number two was really smart, but it was really complicated. I didn't actually understand how they were sort of getting there, whereas number one was just clever strategy, really good execution, so I'm number one. Priya? Uh, my vote is for number one. I think it was really simple, really clever to juxtapose sport against other things that we should be more famous for. Sunita? I spent 13 years of my school life in anxiety over school sport because I was so shit at it. <laughs> um, and heroes don't always wear lycra and runners, so I'm going with number one, voting for my younger self. OK, so, Todd, you're the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> for what it's worth, uh, two was a better ad. Mm. OK. Well, you know what? That doesn't mean they win still. <laughs> <laughs> this trophy still goes and likeable. Congratulations, we will punt this trophy right to you. <laughs> uh, 
After years inside our filthy houses, we're finally heading back out into the disgusting world. <laughs> Luckily, brands have us covered. Glen 20 is giving the world a spray from our gross packages to grotty public transport. Peace of mind. It's hard to find these days. That's why Glen 20 is now with you on the go, killing 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses, including COVID-19. Glen 20 on the go is peace of mind you can hold on to. Hmm, feels a bit racist. <laughs> well, Dettol has the cricket clean bowled. The Bone White Blazer, a well-tailored tribute. Worn every year, washed never. Washed and never? OK, vanish. That suit should go in the bin. <laughs> That's part of Dettol's Bat Bowl Dettol campaign. No thank you, Dettol. A Bat Bowl is how we got ourselves into this mess. <laughs> Sunita, <laughs> how far can you push pandemic paranoia? Look, well, I think we're sick of COVID and we're now immune to paranoia. I mean, you just have to look at how deaf we've become around the increasingly frightening death rates. The insight here is we all know that we can pick up something super fast, so paranoia isn't motivating anymore. What's motivating is we don't want to be locked up and we want our freedom. So back to the Dettol ad, I think they missed a trick. What they could have owned is an ad like the 60s where Colgate did the Ring of Confidence, which gave you protection against against uh, tooth decay and bad breath, Dettol could have owned our debut back into circulation and kept us there. So it could have been Dettol's confidence keeps you out and about, not just limited to the cricket. I think for yourselves. Uh, I think that manufactured fear in this case uh, is not required because the real fear is quite intense around COVID. I think the latest numbers I saw were 91% of Australians are concerned about getting sick again. So if I was them, I wouldn't dial up the fear within the ads. For me, it would be a frequency strategy, which is uh, communicate more during this time period because it is top of mind for people. I think what has changed, though, is, is the category can be basically broken down into symptom relievers and um, condition preventers. And what COVID has done is, is, is increase the condition preventer category, which, and we know millennials particularly are susceptible. The, the marketers call it um, getting people to start their buying journey earlier, yeah. <laughs> which is such a <laughs> wink. But it basically <laughs> means selling people stuff before they get sick. It used to be people waited three days and that was the point at which they would go to the supermarket to buy something to make themselves feel better. Now they're trying to get them earlier, like before they're even sick. But whether these products actually stop you getting sick or not is a whole new sort of mm. conversation. Oh, uh, well, yeah, and the, the conversation goes like this. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick conversation, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Well, I think the thing is, these brands will have seen a massive spike in sales over the last two years, and what they're looking to do is sustain that growth. So what they're trying to create here are long-term behaviours. So spray and pray is what they want people to be doing <laughs> out and about every day in their everyday lives. Mm. So it's a long-term behavioural shift that they're trying to drive. They want people to spray and pray, but we want to keep that out of the churches, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're laughing at a different joke to the one I made. <laughs> I'm hearing March. March? <laughs> uh, for decades, one song has been the anthem of going to work when you shouldn't. Don't let cars off the Steal your day away from you. Been Sadly, I took some cod drool and committed war crimes. <laughs> Then Codrill sang a different tune. Cold coming on? There can't be. I have my son this weekend. Own your cold. Work from home, so at playtime, you can unlock Veronicasaurus. <laughs> Let's go home. Soldier on sooner with Codrill. Mm, sadly, Veronicasaurus is now extinct. <laughs> Codrill's new slogan is Own Your Cold. I'd have gone with You Can't Be Sneezy Under Albanese. <laughs> D, can Codrill sell personal responsibility? Own Your Cold. It's such inspo empowered bullshit language. Isn't it? <laughs> Own Your Cold. Um, yeah, it's, it's terrible. And they're still giving you really bad 
health advice. Like, it's not as bad as, you know, soldier on and infect everyone else with your flu, but it's still stay home and keep working, whereas what you should be doing is resting, but they can't monetise rest. But I guarantee there's someone in their factories working out a codral pillow or something so that they can somehow work out how to tell you to rest. But, yeah, if, if you've got a cold, rest. People, don't soldier off. <laughs> Just rest. Mm. Can you imagine, though, how frustrated the Codrill marketing team must be right now? It's a perfect storm for peak sales. You know, you've got the biggest flu season we've ever seen, tick. You've got headlines constantly warning about new variants, perfect. You've got consumers that want to be out and about without showing symptoms or need some form of relief. You've got a social norm that makes you move every time someone sneezes or coughs. And there's a shortage of GPs. It's the perfect moment for Codrill and for Soldier On. The truth is we all do want to Soldier On now and we want our teachers to Soldier On, we want our mums to Soldier On, we want our hospitality staff to Soldier On, but we can't say it. And regulation prevents Codrill from saying it as well. So they have no option but to get us to diagnose that sniffle really, really fast, stay indoors and hope that you'll be out by the weekend. Yeah, I think they've probably spent a lot of time trying to redefine how they move Soldier On in the new post-COVID world because you can't just tell everyone to go back into work and infect everyone. So I do think they're asking people to take personal responsibility and that actually might be quite a smart move because it's much more peer-to-peer -peer rather than top-down and corporations telling you what to do. Soldier On doesn't work as a message anymore. I know that because I rang Russell and I was like, Soldier On, mate! <laughs> Where are you, Soldier On? In ads, germs can look like kidney beans, crime scenes, or bits of green. These germs are just balloons. <laughs> Surprise! You're dying! <laughs> While Demerson made this monster. Forget cough syrup, hit it with a stick! <laughs> Todd, how do you design the perfect gross germ? Well, well, first, so fear sells, but it often results in people being paralyzed or undecided on what to do next, where disgust actually prompts avoidance and prompts you to do something about it. So their idea is to visualize disgust in some way, shape, or form. The idea that your table is contaminated with E. coli and salmonella and you need to protect your children and you're, you're, you're moving away <laughs> yeah. from because people say, so this <laughs> notion... By the way, it's not any cleaner over here. <laughs> <laughs> But this, this notion of that we're all contaminated is really demonizing germs or bacteria. I mean, we live with bacteria all the time. So they're, they're trying to bring it to life visually in a disgusting way to prompt us to do something about it. But in my mind, the majority of this is an advertising construct. Although I find that this germ is so cute that I actually don't want him to get hurt. But that's just me. <laughs> um, with your children, you don't want to put something disgusting inside your children and kill it with a chemical. Because then you actually do, as a parent, you just go, well, what's that chemical? How strong is it? All that sort of thing. So what they've done is almost made him a different creature outside your child so you don't feel as bad about, you know, killing it. But as I said, I think he's really cute and I think it's really mean to kill him. <laughs> I think, you know, good storytelling always has a villain and a hero and sometimes you do fall in love with the villain. That's you, Dee. Yeah, you love right. a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this uh, biker who used to work at yeah. KBC. <laughs> Introduce you to. He's it's got a real eye for the ladies. <laughs> And I don't know how you feel about vampires, but... <laughs> Trying to hide your cough symptoms is nothing new. In fact, it has been a money spinner for decades, which might explain this old VIX campaign. There are times when you can't afford to cough. <coughs> Sadly, he will not be soldiering on. <laughs> That's all we've got time for tonight. Please thank our panel, Dee Madigan and Priya Patel, Sunita Gloucester and Todd Sampson. <laughs> This little show about advertising ran its first ad, not on the ABC, but in the hand of Andrew Denton at the Logies. Ruin beer. <laughs> and ABC viewers were certain we were about to ruin the whole network when we ran this ad to promote a new show called The Gruen Transfer and received hundreds 
of complaints. We'll see you next week. When the heat of the day is relentless and yours has taxed your heart, the ends in sight for every man a reward for your hard yards. It's the cold side that you love. It means the moment's oh so near. Because everything is worth it for a crew and beer. Everything's worth it 